Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mr. Gopal. Um, it's uh, actually our pleasure to be here, and uh, we are pretty excited to uh, to be given the uh, the opportunity to kickstart this uh, this webinar with the first presentation and uh, uh, um, uh, a short introduction uh, into the textra world and uh, expertise. So I'll be uh, uh, starting the the presentation, and we'll. Uh, uh, let me run hand over uh, the room to Pierre. Uh, so a little bit of history. Uh, the Dextra Group uh, was established uh, in the early 80s and uh, has grown over the years into, as you were saying, Mr. Mr. Gopal earlier, um, as a leading manufacturer and distributor of uh, products and systems, um, generally for the construction industry. And by construction industry, we mean uh, high-rise buildings, civil and infrastructures, uh, but of course, uh, marine and ports. Um, the Dextra Group um, is uh, strong of uh, approximately 1,000 people worldwide and is supported by uh, three factories. We'll come back to that a bit later. Um, the, we provide uh, solutions uh, for what we could call below or underground structures, above ground structures, uh, with a range of ground anchors, composite materials, Pierre will come back to that, and marine tie bars for port applications. Uh, couplers are also known as mechanical splicing systems, are uh, also uh, one of the products we will be uh, um, showing you uh, a bit later today. So here is a quick snapshot of the Dextra Group uh, um, presence worldwide uh, with um, 13 offices from Asia through India, Middle East, Europe, North uh, and South America, three factories. Um, and as you can see, we basically operate on a, on a global scale. The three factories are um, based in Bangkok, and that's where I'm sitting today a second factory in India, and a third factory in Guangzhou, China, where Pierre is sitting right now. Um, each of these uh, uh, factories having its own area of expertise on a range of uh, uh, products and systems. As we were mentioning uh, earlier, the product and, uh, um, and systems that uh, uh, we are supplying are uh, um, related to commercial residential projects, uh, nuclear facilities, infrastructures, and of course today um, uh, we will be focusing on uh, marine industry uh, as a theme of the webinar. As the last fold of this introduction, um, Something that we can say, quality is actually everything uh, uh, in everything that we do. Uh, and uh, thanks to our certified labs, um, we are able actually to uh, test our systems and uh, therefore guarantee their performance and compliance to requirements. It's now time to uh, hand the presentation over to Pierre, who will walk us through some of the extra innovative solutions. Thank you, Julian. So indeed, um, the objective of today is to answer this question in uh, how um, uh, can we answer the challenges, the opportunities uh, for ports and shipping. And so at Dextra, we believe that uh, innovation is uh, the part where we can play a role. And um, as a manufacturer, as a supplier, we see that uh, we can address it in three different ways uh, through uh, innovative production processes through um, new materials and also uh, addressing many uh, uh, new applications. Um, so those three fields of innovation can have uh, impact in uh, four categories uh, and that's what we would like to, to show today. Uh, one aspect is um, the speed of execution and what we mean here is uh, especially the construction phase, how, how to build a port faster, but also uh, if the design is smart it will increase uh, productivity uh, as far as operation is concerned. Um, 
other aspect also where this innovation will, uh, will uh, show is uh, when it comes to uh, quality and safety. Uh, again, uh, uh, all this during the construction phase will have an impact uh, on, the, on the later uh, execution and operation of the port. And uh, looking down the road, uh, this is uh, uh, very important to consider the question of the sustainability and durability if not for us, probably for, for our children and grandchildren. And that's a very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, current concern and becoming a, a larger concern. So that's, that's something definitely to, uh, to address. Um, the fourth direction we would like to look at is modularity. And what we mean here is adaptability, flexibility, um, something that is uh, important in a world that is changing so fast, like, like our world today. So, the, the first and probably the, the most iconic field for us for innovation is to introduce to you um, composite material. Um, so we call them a dextra fiber reinforced polymer. But actually, I think many of us know them just simply by fiberglass. Um, so dextra here in Guangzhou, we manufacture uh, those products so as a, a long um, bar. Uh, so we have a uh, very innovative process called pultrusion, and basically we can extrude those products by pulling. So that's that's the concept of pultrusion. So um, let me show you a few applications of uh, how uh, those uh, fiberglass products can help uh, the challenges of ports. Um, the first application that we would like to show you is um, during construction phase. Um, it's very common to have a concrete structure and we know concrete structure are generally uh, prone to uh, uh, corrosion. So once the, the, the steel rebar that are inside will rust, it will crack the concrete and it will be, become a, um, a, a degrading situation. So um, this is a smart design from Australia uh, where we reinforce the wall, the outside of the wall. So we call it the outer skin with those fiberglass rebar and therefore, uh, the concrete that is in contact with the seawater will not be damaged. So that's, uh, what, that's one uh, example. Um, but uh, actually, you don't always have to combine uh, those fiberglass rebar with steel rebar. It's possible to use them uh, individually, I would say, or exclusively. Um, so on the next, um, on the next application, uh, we see here uh, flat concrete. So basically, uh, uh, just laying down concrete on the ground level that could be used uh, for uh, roads, sidewalk, parking, but maybe more in a port, we could imagine uh, uh, storage areas. Uh, and here, instead of using uh, steel rebar that have to be coated to, to, to protect from corrosion, could be uh, epoxy, galvanization. No, in this case, we use fiberglass rebars because they will not, they will not rust. And that's um, a huge saving on the life cycle because there's no maintenance required years after years. Um, another application we would like um, to, to show also is uh, the need for anchors. Uh, anchors are commonly used when, when you need to build a, a port. Uh, it's an alternative, I would say, to, to marine tie bars that uh, Julien will introduce later. Um, but also in, in many, uh, many marine structure, uh, anchors can be used. So at Dextra, we supply those um, uh, fiberglass bar with plate nut to make it an anchor uh, with coupler to extend the length. So you can see on this picture, it's pretty obvious it's a lightweight solution. Again, the advantage of the corrosion free. But in some cases, we also supply the steel anchors um, that had certain protection level. And the most important is we were able to guarantee 100 years lifetime, which was the requirement of the project. Um, further, further to those um, industrial application, um, there is uh, one very interesting uh, uh, type of port is for oil and gas terminal. Uh, recently, uh, more and more um, oil and gas have been stored uh, in underground structure that we call uh, underground cavern. Um, and that's to avoid using tanks, the, the, the typical example of tanks, you see them on this picture on the, on the left side. Um, why? Because it can free up space on two accounts. So um, first account is um, obviously by storing oil underground, you don't need all that uh, 
flat space outside used for oil. But the second advantage is all the, the, the rock, the rock mass excavated during the construction of the cavern can be used to uh, reclaim land and therefore create space. And so why those caverns were possible is because uh, fiberglass bowls have been used um, and that was the best way to prevent corrosion for the 50 years lifetime of the cavern. So those are again example of um, uh, construction of new structure. Um, I still would like to show you two more examples of repair application. Um, here we can see a dry dock and if you look carefully the walls uh, at the back end of the of the dry dock you can see the different color uh, so you have a zoom on this right side and basically the concrete was completely damaged and had to be uh, to be removed and replaced so how to reinforce that concrete to be sure uh, it's the last time we have to do maintenance uh, by drilling holes in the fresh concrete uh, and then, uh, sorry, in the, in, the, in the existing concrete, and then um, epoxy, I mean, gluing them with epoxy um, there, and then uh, just uh, lay, I mean, cast a new concrete. The advantage is this concrete now being reinforced with those fiberglass rebars, it will not rust. And therefore, uh, this is a maintenance operation that is done once and once for good. Um, the next level of this kind of repair uh, is um, to, to uh, repair jetty using a concrete beam. And uh, in addition of those uh, very same uh, fiberglass dowels uh, installed, there's um, a, uh, also a post-tension bar that has been installed and that can uh, reinforce the concrete to uh, reduce the risk of cracks even further. That's the best example of um, two technologies of Dextra being brought together the fiberglass composite material and the steel material. And um, that's what we would like to show you more also is about steel material available at Dextra. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, uh, Pierre, for this uh, interesting approach on the use of uh, composite material and uh, innovative solutions uh, like in various structures and projects. Um, whether it was for uh, a new build or uh, repair. Um, this next part of the presentation um, will explain and show how some of the steel-made products uh, and systems manufactured by Dextra, such as marine tie bars um, and other splicing systems, couplers, um, can contribute uh, to marine structures and projects, fast and safe construction. So here an example of um, steel wall uh, that uh, is anchored into an anchor wall that is as well made of steel sheet piles. And the aim of the game, if I may say, is to anchor the main sea wall into this anchor wall and offer stability to the key that will be built uh, on top. It's interesting to note that uh, depending on ground conditions um, and uh, project requirements, uh, such key walls can either be made of steel, as mentioned and as shown here, but as well um, of concrete walls. Uh, and this would depend on uh, design requirements and uh, uh, ground conditions. The principle would remain the same anchoring a main sea wall into a retaining wall located in the sea. Here are uh, a, a few pictures and some views of marine structures either built with uh, steel or concrete walls. Um, obviously, uh, it's possible to combine uh, those different types of walls uh, in order to fit uh, the purpose and project requirements. Um, and uh, this is actually uh, um, making it uh, uh, quite uh, an easy transition to the next application that is this time mostly uh, uh, made of reinforced concrete. Another technique, if I may say, um, of uh, building such uh, key walls or large jetties are what we call concrete caissons. Um, so, they are actually a, a type of uh, modular structure um, 
which is uh, often uh, uh, used in the construction of large keyholes and large jetties um, uh, at sea. Um, in that particular example, um, Dextra couplers, a coupler is actually a splicing system um, that is uh, designed to connect uh, steel rebars together that are incorporated into reinforced concrete. Um, those couplers are used uh, in order to allow smooth connection and avoid congestion in those uh, uh, caisson reinforced concrete structures that are um, already quite uh, uh, congested with, uh, with steel. Um, as you can see on this slide, the uh, little uh, illustration shows um, a concrete element with uh, the bottom part in a blue color. This blue color is actually manufactured generally in a pre castian off-site and then is uh, either barged or tucked to the location of the project on the seaside. Actually, at initial stage, this caisson floats. So it's possible to get it tucked on location and then um, uh, submerge it uh, at the seaside on the wall location and complete uh, the uh, top structure by casting concrete in place uh, at sea. Um, this also um, uh, allows me to make a transition to a more general topic which is becoming uh, uh, quite uh, important in, uh, um, uh, in the, our everyday uh, life is basically implementation of these systems and products um, at design stage. So how can we basically help contractors and designers um, to um, ensure engineering from product to project? Um, we allow that uh, by providing online uh, tools so, as you can see on this slide, uh, there is a range of tools um, that are actually uh, qualified as user-friendly add-ins, and they are made um, to help and ease designers and contractors work at initial stage, but as well along uh, the course of execution of, uh, of the project. Um, in other words, uh, these tools allow to get uh, visualization of the design at any point in time um, and as well uh, support uh, uh, a gain in productivity uh, when it comes to uh, those design activities. Um, this brings us to the end of this uh, uh, presentation um, and uh, we would like to uh, thank you all for uh, uh, your kind attention.